All right, everyone. Welcome to another Weekend No Show. My name is JG. I'm here with my boy, CL Smooth. How's it going, man? What's good, family? And of course, the Ebony Blade. What's up? Ebony Blade, a.k.a. Bud Light. What's up, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, we're really doing this, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. It keeps, it keeps getting and my, and my father's son. <laughs> All right. All right. Works for me. So anyway, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Dalai Lama and uh, an unfortunate episode of tongue sucking. Then uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, comedy, I, never, I never thought I would hear those words. <laughs> unfortunate. Hey, that's just, just rolled off the tongue there. No, no mm-hmm. pun intended. Heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so then companies that get woke aren't going broke. And finally, woman spends 500 days in a cave. What? But anyway, let's let's start with the Dalai Lama. Smooth, what's up, man? Oh, it's it's been a weird uh, weird week in in the news, folks. Um, so recently, a video came out, and uh, the 14th Dalai Lama um, has apologized for this video that comes out uh, that came out, and it shows him hugging an Indian boy um, after inviting him up on, up on stage. And the Dalai Lama is 87 years old. And when the boy comes up on stage, um, the Dalai Lama points to his own lips and says, um, uh, basically indicates for the boy to kiss him on the lips. I, I'm sorry, I should back up. The, I think the boy asked for a hug. Um, he, uh, the Dalai Lama said, yes, you can have a hug, but you need to give me a kiss on my cheek first. Right. Which which he does. And then he points to his, his own lips and says, and then I think finally here also pointing to his lips. And then he pulls the boy um, by the chin and kisses him on the mouth and then says, and suck my tongue. Yikes. <laughs> Damn. All, all this on video. Now, recently, um, a, top, a top Tibetan leader defended the Dalai Lama um, after this video came out on social media. Um, asking the child to suck his tongue, and uh, the this this person, uh, Penpa Searing, I think you pronounce, is is the head of Tibet's government in exile. He said the spiritual leader's actions were innocent, um, and he said despite this wave of criticism, he believes that um, this is just it just shows the Dalai Lama's affectionate behavior. He says, "quote His Holiness has always lived in sanctity, following the life of a Buddhist monk, including celibacy." His years of spiritual practice have gone beyond sensorial pleasures. Um, and he said the political angle of this incident can't be ignored because they're claiming that, you know, Chinese government and media has blown this out of proportion to try to embarrass the Dalai Lama because, you know, Tibet and China have been. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Years and, and, and all of that. Um, the Dalai Lama, of course, is a Nobel Prize, uh, Peace Prize recipient. He's, he's spent over 60 years in exile. Um, ha- having been forced to flee Tibet by by Chinese forces in, in 1959. He did issue a public apology for his inappropriate exchange with the boy. Um, and it, what they said was, His Holiness wishes to apologize to the boy and his family, as well as many, many friends across the world, for his for the hurt his words may have caused. Um, his Holiness often teases people he meets in an innocent and playful way, even in public and before cameras. He regrets the incident. And then one last point that I thought was interesting. The video clip um, was was heavily criticized by lots of people online, including uh, our friend rapper Cardi B, who called out predators after watching the video. She said the world is full of predators. Uh, she, she tweeted this uh, on Twitter. Um, they prey on the innocent, the ones who are most unknowing, our children. Predators could be our neighbors, our school teachers, even people with money, power, and our churches. Um, and she urged parents to constantly talk with your kids about boundaries and what they shouldn't allow people to do to them, which I agree with all of what she, what she tweeted. Um, all of, I, you know, I, I second all of that. Um, I just think it's interesting because isn't it Cardi B that admitted, you know, that she's a predator. That, yeah. That she's a predator that, that in, in her, in her very recent pre- past, she used to drug and rob people that, that she brought back to her hotel for sex. Yes. So I, just, I just thought it was interesting that she would make those claims. Yeah, I remember that. Really is the definition of a predator. Anyway, fellas, 
you know, after after the the Mississippi girl with with, with, <laughs> with dating dog, we've got the Dalai Lama who's asking children to suck his tongue. What, what, what y'all got to say about the Dalai Lama? Down bad, man. Down bad. Listen, down man. Bad. The Dalai Lama got to get his too. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man, no. <laughs> Clearly joking. <laughs> the children. I mean, you know, here's the thing. What can we say about it other than that's some unfortunate shit, man? I mean, I thought it was interesting that, uh, I mean, I don't know this, but I was talking to someone else about that. And apparently they doubled down. It was like, oh, it wasn't what y'all thought it was. And I'm just like, my whole thing is like, nowadays, just fucking apologize and get it over with everyone. When people double down, it just makes it worse. So yeah. just like, you know, just, you know, just be like, oh, that was a fuck up, you know, just accept your fuck up and move on. But when you double down, it just make it just makes things worse. So that's pretty much, you know, what I got to say, just starting off. Well, wasn't there some kind of when they doubled down, it, it was something about sticking out your tongue was a was a cultural thing or something. But I never yeah. they didn't say the sucking the tongue was was a cultural thing. Right. Yeah, I think they try to play it off like, you know, it was a teasing, playful thing. But I think when you when you combine it all with like, OK, now kiss me on my lips first. It, like, it's just, yo, man, it's, it's a no go, man. It, the, the, first <laughs> yeah. thing, the first thing you you say, or the, I, I think is like, OK, if if he's willing to do this in front of the cameras. Right. And all these people. What the hell is going on, <laughs> you know, in the Dalai Lama's crib when ain't nobody around? Oh man, you know, the freak train is coming through. I mean, we, we, we've got <laughs> the we've got the history in this country of, of of the of the Catholic priests and all the the nastiness that they did to, to the children, and we know all about that. I mean, look, man, yo, we keep we keep putting these people on a pedestal, man. Oh, he's a Dalai Lama. He's the president of the United States. He's you know she's this and that. They're human beings, and and they're capable of all kinds of things, right? I mean. This is just a terrible, terrible incident, man. Terribly disappointing, you know, yeah. terribly disappointing. Well, it could be. I mean, I, I just there's something that wasn't mentioned because I looked at a couple of articles and what people aren't getting from this. I, I don't see any mention of this is that that boy, that little boy, he's he's now the golden child. You remember that movie with Eddie, Eddie Murphy? <laughs> yes. He's, he's got he's got superpowers now. See, he's probably we're talking his crap. He's over there making butterflies out of nothing. He's like turning lead into gold. He can bring people back to life. And now because of that, but see, you all don't see that. That's the thing, the golden child. Well, let me, let me ask you this, man. If that was your son, what what would you be doing right about now? I'd be like, how'd I get this son? <laughs> <laughs> Where does Mofo come from? <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> it, it ain't mine. It ain't mine. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, here's 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 an interesting thing. I, I don't know much about. I mean, I know the Dalai Lama. In fact, I think he I think he spoke at my at my at my graduation. Uh, oh, my, really? my grad school graduation. But uh, anyway, humble brag. But um, here's the <laughs> you, thing. Uh, you it's, didn't. You didn't. Suck his tongue, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't I at that graduation or was that be, was that afterwards? I can't remember. <laughs> Listen, he stuck his tongue out as I was crossing the stage and I didn't know what to do. So I just kept it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Truth comes out. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Do you guys think that it was, you know, was it possibly truly just an innocent little playful thing? Oh, I mean, it could have been, but it was just inappropriate. It was wi wildly, okay, definitely, definitely inappropriate. In yeah. Inappropriate. Like, his his intentions Lama don't really be... matter at this point. It was inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like the Dalai Lama might be a, a big dumb idiot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he is eighty seven years old. So so there there is a percentage chance that uh, you know he just was being playful, being te teasing or whatever. But it's it's totally inappropriate, totally unacceptable. Oh yeah. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I really hope that you know, who knows how many, like you said, who I don't know how many times he would have done this, but hopefully now he's like, oh, I, I cannot do this anymore. Right. Here's an interesting thing. And, you know, you, I don't have a problem with quote unquote cancel culture. What if they cancel the Dalai Lama? China's China been trying to do that for a long time. I mean, he's not, gonna, he's not going to get canceled because, I mean, who's, who's going to cancel him? 
Cardi B. <laughs> Cardi B. Yeah. And by the way, I find it interesting that you know, of all the you know, of all the people to go to, who's who's checking for Cardi B these days? I mean, listen, she was on. Um, was it her? This was on something. I think that my mother was watching with with uh, Hillary Clinton and someone else. Was it Cardi well, B or Megan Thee Stallion? Same. I mean, they might as well be the same person to me. Man, I'm just different. It was to me. Cardi one. can rap though. I, Me- Megan can't really rap. But I'm just like she, she. She's on. She's on this talk show with with the first lady, and and the first lady's like bigging her up, like she's like former first lady, or for, former first lady. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is going on in this world, man? You know, yeah, she's trying to get them twerking lessons. <laughs> yeah, I know you Hillary do. can twerk. <laughs> Hillary's from Arkansas. <laughs> That's a horrifying image. Why? Why did I bring that up? Thank you. I bet you Hillary got moves. You, you know yeah. what? We got we got to move on. We got to move on. Ebony <laughs> <laughs> Ebony Blade is uh, <laughs> is going in the direction we can. Yeah, I think we got to move on from this one. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, Dalai Lama, you're you're wrong. Weekend No Show says you're wrong, man. You're wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, yeah. keep your tongue to yourself, Dalai. Keep your tongue to yourself, man. <laughs> Anyway, I want to talk about similar to what we talked about last time, where we talked about Bud Light and the uh, the outcry, the backlash when when they hired the trans activists. Well, this week I want to talk about the companies where they've done something similar. They they pissed off conservatives, and if you guys know, there's that phrase that conservatives use. It's called "get woke, go broke," and you guys have heard this right. This is the first time I've heard it, but it makes sense. Okay. Well, I I heard it on a couple of comic book uh, YouTubes that I used to watch, which is uh, kind of why I stopped watching a lot of them. But it means that when a company decides to get into the social justice or anything that they perceive as liberal agenda, they'll say that they lose money. They get woke and then they go broke. And they just love saying, I mean, hey, it rhymes, you know, it, and it must, <laughs> must be true. So. What's happened is that someone wrote an article here where they were saying, this is on Rolling Stone, and the, the subtitle, it, it says, companies that go woke aren't, go, aren't going broke. They're more profitable than ever. Then it says, sorry, Kid Rock, Bud Light's going to be just fine. Right. And they were just talking about, okay, there's a lot of outrage. What actually happens with these companies? So the first one that they, they brought up was uh, Kerrig, you know, the, the, the coffee makers. Yes. Uh, Kerrig. So apparently, I didn't even remember this one, but they were saying there was a candidate named Roy Moore, Republican candidate, supposed to represent Alabama. Uh, multiple women accused him of sexual misconduct. Then Hannity, Sean Hannity, cast out on the allegations, warned viewers not to rush to judgment. So then Kerrig pulled their ads from Hannity's show. In response, Hannity's fans called for a boycott and started smashing the Kerrigs on social media. And so um, the, the article says, so how's Carrick doing now? Parent company acquired Dr. Pepper Snapple Group in an $18.7 billion deal in 2018. That's just one year later. Now they're the third largest beverage company in North America. Uh, their annual gross profits have swelled ever since, reaching $7.3 billion in 2022, nearly 5% increase from the previous year. Turns out a handful of Hannity viewers throwing a tantrum didn't make a dent. Um, United Airlines was next. They said that they were going to be uh, having half of their incoming pilot trainees be women or people of color. Piers Morgan said they they need to recruit blind people next to tick another pathetic virtue signaling box. And then (laughs) Tucker Carlson whined. Blind pilots. Blind pilot. (laughs) Tucker Carlson said they were were suffering from an incurable brain disease called wokeness. Boy, he really zinged them there, didn't he? Yeah. And and so then uh, what happened to United? Well, they recorded, uh, reported, Fourth quarter 2022 profits, 843 million, beating the Wall Street expectations. I mean, the bottom line is a company called Carhartt that that uh, sells um, heavy duty uh, apparel for for workers. I love my Carhartt jacket. Yeah, so they pissed off conservatives by upholding 
Biden's uh, federal vaccine mandate for larger businesses, even though it was struck down, they as a company decided to do it. So then that pissed off conservatives. But even though, so they're a private company, so they couldn't really see what the profits were. But they're saying um, in December 2022, they announced an investment of $4.6 million to expand its campus, plans to hire 125 more workers at an average wage of $43 an hour. Doesn't exactly sound broke. I need to hire. I need to go work for them. Man, uh, Disney, we got Halle Bailey as a Little Mermaid. Uh, they're opposing the don't say gay laws. So they're on in the crosshairs. And they said Disney uh, profits have surged. Uh, gross profit of 2022 was 28.321 billion, 27% increase from 2021. And even though fourth, fourth quarter was down, that is mostly because of the startup costs of Disney Plus, streaming costs. And they said Disney Plus now has more subscribers than Netflix. So it's not doing anything. Nike, we know Colin uh, Kaepernick. And is it Kaepernick or is it Kaepernick? Kaepernick. It's, it's Kaepernick. Okay. Yeah. So Kaepernick. So we saw what happened there. The, the NFL and Nike both made record profits. And even though they were shunned and, and shouted, shouted at by conservatives and NFL in particular, and at my particular job, I see this. There's a lot of uh, NFL leaning into the social justice and doing these things. And they're just saying how they are just ridiculously profitable. And what actually the article says, unbelievably prosperous, locked in media deals worth tens of billions. And the conservative outcries, eventually, I would even, you can't even say come to nothing because they're making profits. <laughs> so, right. I mean, is, is there any company that you guys see? I mean, does it affect you at all when, when there's these outcries like that? Not, I mean, for me, not at all. I mean, especially if it's coming from Tucker Carlson or, or Pierce Morgan or anybody like that, who I've, who I've decided are idiots. So, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, if some, if some company wants to, you know, and well, let me before I say, well, let me say this first. If some company wants to be, quote unquote, well, fine, I don't care if I like the product and, and you're not and I don't dislike you. Being woke is no reason for me to dislike a company. Being, quote unquote, woke is not a reason for me to dislike a company. And so it doesn't affect me at all. In fact, you know what? Funny thing is. I hadn't really fucked with Nike, but I, I, I still haven't bought it. But when that whole Kaepernick thing happened and then Nike and they did that whole ad campaign, I mean, I clicked on the site, you know, they at least got some web, you know, their site at least got some, you know. Yeah, you got interested again. Got some action, yeah, from me, because I was just like, hmm, that's interesting. Let me, let me see what this campaign is about. I still didn't buy a pair of shoes, but still, <laughs> it, it worked out, you know. So, yeah. you know, it kind of backfires. You know, in terms of it didn't backfire, but it, you know, for me, you know, when someone does that, I'm like, oh, let me let me see what this company is about. So, yeah, yeah, it doesn't doesn't backfire on me at all. But I OK, think it goes back to, you know, it, it, it kind of go, goes back to the conversation we had on our previous pod, which is, you know, bo both these political uh, extremes are using people <laughs> for their own <laughs> for their own purposes. You know, they don't really care about the the actual issues at hand um you know because whether it's whether it's you know transgenderism you know gay rights black rights um what wh whatever it is politicians and companies use these things for profit right um i forget what was the example that that jg was using but you know if a company Oh, I think it's the Bud, the Bud Light one, right? So it's like if if Bud Light is making a ton of month, ton of money off of partnering with um, with Dylan Mulvaney, right? They're not going to come out and apologize, right? Right. But if if they perceive that they're taking a hit to their brand, then they're going to come out and apologize. And what what does that tell you? All these companies only care about one thing: is it profitable? I don't care. How how good on the surface it looks like, all right, let's support black people, let's support gay rights, or let's support the climate or whatever it is. They don't give a damn about none of that shit. They don't care. 
does it make them money or does it help their brand in one way or another? Now, maybe it takes time um, for them to get there, you know, for the investment to pay off, but that's all they really care about. So I think this um, go woke, get broke thing, what happens, I think initially there has been some backlash. They have lost some money, but what you've seen over time is, and the examples you've given, Jay, is that um, ultimately these companies have been all right. They have made money. What that tells me is not that they were right necessarily in their stances. It's that, you know, um, society has moved more and more towards a, a more liberal um, mindset. And so them, quote unquote, going woke is not hurting them as much. And actually it's turning into profit for them. So that that's not a statement on whether they're right or they're wrong or the, or the left is correct or the right is correct. It's just, I think, you know, a, a fact of the way society is going. Society is becoming more liberal, open minded, however you want to term it. And so when these companies go woke, it's less of a hit for them. Um, it's not considered that big of a deal. And so they, you know, it's, it's business as usual. So I think that's that's what's happening. Now, is there, I think the only one that actually kind of offended me a little bit. I don't know if you guys remember that Gillette commercial from a few years back where it was like, man, we can do better and we will do better. And it was showing all these situations where you know, men were acting like men, like, you know how boys will be boys, they're going to fight, and they're breaking up the fight with the boys. And then they showed this dude, this girl walked by, and clearly he thought she was attractive, so he was going to go after her. And then this brother, like, stopped him, like, no, man, no. And I thought, <laughs> you know, somebody, somebody's got to make the first, I mean, they should have made it so that if she, if she said no, and he wouldn't leave her alone, then yeah. Then somebody needs to step in, hey, bro, you know, she said no. But Somebody's got to make the first move, you know, yeah. and it's kind of usually our position where we have to step forward and, and hey, you got rejected, then you back off. But I don't see how that's a bad thing to approach somebody. And I watched the whole commercial. There was more incidences in the commercial where I was like, wow, Gillette, I don't like this. And I can't even say I boycotted them because I actually stopped using them years ago because, man, they were expensive. I was like, man, I see why dudes wear beards now these gillettes are out of, <laughs> out of control but uh yeah nothing else really got to me though so this is this is kind of a tangent but i you know what i take issue not even you know the whole you know go woke, go go woke, go broke or whatever i don't like the usurp <laughs> how middle-aged white conservative usurp you know, like black slang terms. <laughs> oh man, that's that's just they they hate us, and yet all the stuff we do filters out to them eventually, which they end up using. I I've seen like uh, these podcasts and stuff called something something AF, you know, right. whatever as fuck, real as fuck, you know, you know we're mountain climbing as fuck or whatever. I'm like, wow, it's <laughs> nice that all this stuff moves out. So yeah, and so whenever I. Whenever, um, whenever that happens, I literally stop. I stop using that term immediately. I'm like, oh, that term's that term's dead to me now. Hey, can Am we still right? use on, on fleek? <laughs> <laughs> is, is fleek is that still around? No. Okay. Uh, well, they, no, they, no. They, they've 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 been they've been doing that for years though, man. You know. Oh, remember this is, Yeah, remember this is way back in the day. Remember when Jerry Seinfeld, the Jerry Seinfeld show, when uh, was it Jerry was like, I'm getting jiggy with it. I was like, oh, that is the end of that term forever. I never used that term. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, but I just remember, I remember when I was like, oh, this shit just made its way to, to the Seinfeld show. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that term, is, that term is no longer cool at all. So, but yeah, I just find it interesting when I, when I hear those terms. But I'll, I'll, like sort of middle-aged man, I'm just like, oh, that term is dead. That term is no longer cool. The, the one thing I will say, and I, I know, I know, we all are are totally on the same page with this. But what what bothers me is that, you know, this whole go woke, go broke thing. Again, I, I think it's a manipulation. I think it ultimately hurts the people that they're claiming they're trying to help. Right? Uh, we don't want to see racism and discrimination in the world, but it gets twisted by media and people with a political agenda that they, they, they almost um, overstate it. 
it's it's no longer you know people fighting for their rights it's you know my rights extend into forcing you to you know accept things in your own personal life that that you don't want to accept and i think that ultimately hurts the cause right because black folks we just want to be able to live our life and you know have success and have economic prosperity and be secure and not get you know jacked up by the police and all that kind of stuff. We want to, you know, live normal lives just like everybody else does. But what they're doing, this is my, this is my main problem. What they're doing is media, companies, politicians are creating creating such a climate. They claim that they're pushing for rights for 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 us, right? But they're creating such a climate where they're creating hate and division from the other side. They're making the other side. I mean, if there was racism on the other side before, which I'm, um, you know, there was, they're they're turning that into just pure hate because they're making it seem like all we want to do is take over these these people's these people's lives so they can't live the way that they wanted to. And and you know, I won't speak for you guys, but just as a normal person, I don't I don't want anybody, if you don't like me because of my background or whatever, that's cool. I just want to live my life. And that's all I want. I, you don't have to change shit, man. You know, you just live your life and let me walk down the street without being harassed. That's all I'm talking about, right? But what the, what what this whole kind of narrative has turned into is now that these people feel like, damn, they're taking our whole country, you know. And we can say that's overblown and they're they're right wing extremists and they're crazy and and a lot of that may be true, but most regular folks, like the three of us on this podcast, we just want to live our lives in peace. We're not trying to do anything to anybody else, but they're creating this division is, is, is what I'm saying. And so they're actually harming us. Is that, is that making sense? You, you know what I'm no, saying? I know exactly it, what you're saying. I, 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 it makes sense, but I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. Oh, you better agree so? with it. You better well, agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ebony Blaze. <laughs> listen, these, <laughs> these ad campaigns, these ad campaigns aren't changing anyone's opinions. And so I don't think, you know, some dude with hatred in his heart saw a Gillette commercial and was like, fuck those women. They already had that in their heart. So I, I, you know, I, I don't, I can't believe that an ad campaign really changes anyone's perspective or anyone's heart. It's not necessarily just the ad campaign, though. It's the constant repetition and reinforcement of the the backlash to these campaigns, like, like, you know, you've got your Hannity's Tucker Carlson's and then they magnify it on Twitter, on true social, wherever. And these guys get this information, you know, streamlined into them that, Oh man, you know, the trans and the blacks are, they're going to take everything. And, um, you know, I, I notice a lot of things where people that I know, they just feel like, you know, they're they're demonized because, you know, they might be white or whatever. And it's it's like, well, I'm just trying to say, hey, well, you have some some privileges that I don't have, whether whether or not those are capitalized on. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily capitalized on, but it, it's like this is where some of this resentment's coming from. And then I realized that they're getting this stuff. Sometimes they repeat things to me and it'll be like word for word, like what Hannity said. And it, it'll be kind of shocking sometimes where I notice that sometimes these, these guys, they really believe this shit. They really believe where it's like you, you, you guys and me, we might be like, okay, why, why are they saying this? What is this? What is this? That doesn't necessarily happen. Like, they don't, there's no need for them to look further. They, they trust these guys and this is what they said. And I've off, I've even said the last time, I wish there was, I wish I could have that level of belief in somebody. Yeah. But, but I don't, and, you know, it's probably a flaw on, on my, on my part, but I'm quick to just dismiss somebody. I'm like, you know what, dude, you're an idiot. And then I'm done. I mean, I'll, I'll hear them out and I'm not going to like not be someone's friend, but if someone's, you know, I'm like, dude, if so, I don't know, someone's, you know, quoting Tucker Carlson, and it's something that's clearly just an asinine thing. I'm just like, you know what, man, I love you, but I'm done. <laughs> that's part so, of my problem with those things, too. It's like, what? There's, there's real 
actual issues to talk about. And then they want to say something just completely ridiculous. That's what I just don't get. It's like, why do you, why does it have to be so over the top all the time? And they, they have to get their little digs in and, and I'm like, this isn't making me want to vote for none of you all. (laughs) You you, you know what I did um, over the last couple of years? Cause I, you know, my personality is, I don't feel like I have to be right. I just want to understand what the truth is, you know? And and I feel like the truth, like the extremes, you know, if we want to talk about political extremes are obviously they're the most extreme ends, but there, there's some truth, there's some validity, legitimacy in the grievances on both sides, right? Um, but but they're, they're magnified, oh. well, magnified to the extreme. Right. But the truth is somewhere in the middle. The extremes, though, are there to try to to motivate action for people to come to the middle and to find that middle ground, the middle way, the middle path to, to, to you know, try to find some solutions. And so what I started doing was I would watch a news story on, you know, what they call mainstream TV. Right. So CNN or MSNBC or, or whatnot. I, you know, for most of my life, that's pretty much what I watch. I never watched like Fox News or Tucker Carlson or anything like that. But what I started doing was watching, you know, big news stories and watching both sides presented. And when you start doing that, it, it, it really starts to clue you into how both sides manipulate how the story is told in order to serve whatever narrative that those extremes have. But I found it helpful because it started to help me, I think, find a, a, a better middle ground a fair middle ground to start to try to you know pull apart what's really going on now it's it's not easy it's a difficult thing to 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 do because i you know everybody's lying to you but that's what i've had to start doing and um i i don't know i feel better about my positions because i feel like i'm i'm at least hearing both sides of it and while i tend to lean you know one way or another on on various subjects um i i feel like i'm i'm better informed by doing that now I'm, you know not everybody can and take the time to, to to do that sort of thing, but I just I think it's dangerous for us to get locked into one side or another, um, you know, because we, we don't know what we don't know if we just listen to one storyteller. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a matter of fact, you, you're dead right on that because I actually use an app that's called Ground News. Okay. Uh, Ground, and what it does is it it lists out all the places you see this these stories, and then it actually tries to show you the political bias of each one. Like this, this site normally leads to the right. And it'll say, this is what the right is saying. This is what the left is saying. And then it will even tell you, Hey, if your politics lean left, you probably missed this story because the left isn't really reporting it. If mm-hmm. your politics lean right, you probably missed this story. And it's very interesting to go through and you, you'll read a story uh, from the left and then read about supposedly the same story on the right. And I mean, just completely different. They, they like to magnify different parts of the story. It's just very interesting. So I would definitely recommend that one. The ground. Okay. Ground news. Ground news. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, see you're, you're doing that anyway, but I think this will take a little bit of the work out of it for you. Yeah. I'm about to, I'm about to check that out. I just, you know, I think it's important because, um, if you if you just go back and, and like all the stories, even though we talk about some crazy stories on our podcast, there 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 are some threads that connect things, you know, and it's it's usually connected to one side or another trying to <laughs> leverage what's happening in the world to their to their advantage, and um, you know the only way we don't end up getting trampled on is if we have some some sense of what's what's really going on, so we can make some some decisions. But um, yeah, man, crazy times. Yeah, I I feel like these what they call the the culture wars. I mean, I don't know how this is ever going to hopefully blow over at some point. I I'm I'm hoping that it doesn't turn into some violent crap over a Bud Light. Even though I did read that that there were bomb threats against the Bud Light factories. Yeah. And like, are you are you kidding me? Give me a fucking break <laughs> over a trans person on the damn Bud Light. Incredible. But um, I don't know. 
for me, man, the culture wars, I'm just like, you know what, dude, I don't, I don't have a dog in, in that fight. So, I mean, I get it. It's sort of important, but I'm just like, you know what, I got, I got real life personal problems that I need to worry about. So all the cultural war kind of, you know, issues that pop up, I'm just like, you know what, that's going to be, I mean, that's going to be gone in, in a month. So I don't even, I don't even engage anymore. Yeah. I, I did I did get pulled into the Kaepernick thing. <laughs> and you know, I lost a couple of friends because I'm like, oh, you're an idiot. I'm like, I can't, I was like, I can't, I'm like, I don't, I don't want any idiots in my in my pool of friends. Because I mean, and it wasn't even the actual um, you know, whatever, you know, him taking the knee and all that stuff. What annoyed me was she was like, football is America, football represents this country. I'm like, I'm like, don't nobody <laughs> give a fuck about American football. <laughs> like, but she was staunch on it. She could, she like, she like, you know, when people see football, they see America. I'm like, you really are stupid. And I was oh like, I God. can't be friends with you. Yeah, I don't think I could have dealt with that either. And so I was, so, so that's why I was like, you know, I got to stop engaging in this shit because, you know, I was like, you know, I got, I got, I got my boys. But I'm like, I need some friends in the city I live in. And if I keep getting involved in these stupid conversations, I'm not have yeah, friends. yeah, you got to so. pick your battles too because it's <laughs> yeah. some of that stuff. Like, okay, I'm never going to change their mind. They sure as hell aren't changing my mind. Yeah, so and you but you know, well. aside from the not changing each other's minds, like I'm just like again, you know, not that I'm the, not some fucking genius or anything, but I'm like, you really are stupid. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> want stupid people in my in my circle. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah these culture totally wars, you know, they, are... they sometimes, you know, let, you know, people who you once, you know, respected and like thought they were pretty smart, like, oh no, turns out you're, you're dumb. See, so, see anyway. that, people, that's going to be another section on the weekend no show is that Ebony, Ebony Blade's <laughs> words to live by. Uh, I don't want stupid people in my circle. That's so, true. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there it is. Well, I, okay. I think, I think we ran that one down. <laughs> So I'd like to move on to a truly important story, uh, Ebony Blade. Uh, what's what's up with this woman in the cave? Speaking of stupid people, no, I'm kidding. She's not dumb. <laughs> I don't know. But so so apparently, uh, this woman in Spain, uh, what was her name? Beatrice Flamini. Beatrice Flamini. 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 I was going to call her Flamingo. So she spent 500 days in isolation, and not just in isolation, not like you know, in the, in a room. But in a cave, 500 days, uh, I don't even know why. I read the article, but I don't know why she did it. Uh, maybe it's some kind of uh, They were testing study. the circadian rhythms and how the body ah. responds to absence Got of day it. and night and such. Okay. And so, so aside from that just being a crazy thing, and I don't know if she got paid or, or, or volunteered for it, but you know, I always go, I always go to the most disgusting thing. I'm just wondering where do you store 500 days worth of poop and piss if you're in a cave? Are you digging holes? Do you have like a, a little corner in the cave? And what do you do about smell? 500 days in the cave? It's got to smell awful. So that's where my brain went. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> Just think about it. 500 days. Can you imagine going 500 days without showering? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But what, I, what I'm hoping, I'm guessing that maybe there was like an underground cliff or something. And she just okay. tossed it over the edge. You know, okay. we just oh, squat goodness. down over the edge and just, hey, there we go. Um, she had 500 days worth of wet naps with her. So you know what? They didn't tell us those kinds of things. Did she have wet naps at least? Oh man, I don't know. Or did they see, just plop her in the cave? See, we're asking the real questions here. Real <laughs> Maybe she had one of those what what are those little baggies that the people use for their dogs when they poop on the street? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, when I looked at the video, it it looked really cramped. So I just don't know what other areas there were. Uh, that's why I was hoping maybe there was an area where she could go and throw something somewhere, maybe a bottomless pit or something, or some kind of creature from the Black Lagoon would come up and it, it ate her refuse or something. And What did, what did Dave Chappelle say? It's doo-doo, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so just let's let's. I mean, I'm gonna try to get serious. I mean, I just can't get over the poop factor, but I'm gonna try to get serious. But here's the thing: 500 days with no interaction with another person. I almost lost my mind when I was in my apartment for two weeks, See, I and you know, I, I could walk outside. I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Really? I, you think yeah, you I did. 500 I, days without talking to another living person. I would not. I I, I can't I, imagine having a problem with that. Without I can, music, I could probably do it. The, 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 music, the cave you, part is the part I have thoughts? trouble with. Yeah, my thoughts are all right, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to live in a cave and and, and pooping <laughs> on myself, but I mean, if it's just like, <laughs> yeah. but 500 days, you know, of of isolation, I I I, I doubt that that I I bet that would be good for me. I don't even think that'd be a problem. But that's me. Uh, well, apparently yeah. she had books. She had books and art supplies. And, yeah, she was and, painting and, and, and yarn. So I, I guess you know, there's way. But how do you? I think I feel like I would lose track of time, and then that would fuck with my brain a little bit because I would I wouldn't know. You know, yeah. after a while, I would, I would think that you know, after day I don't know two hundred, I would just lose track of time, and then I was like, oh, uh, am I leaving tomorrow, or did I just start yesterday? Yeah, I think you would just be so disoriented that it would drive you crazy a little bit. Isn't that why they stopped doing that's isn't that why they stopped throwing people in the hole in prisons? Because that it was it was uh cruel they and stopped, unusual punishment. They stopped doing it? Yeah, and, and some at least, yeah. Well, she said that she she lost track of time, which was the point, and that she she thought it was way less than five hundred days when they came to get her. She thought wow. something had happened and something had gone wrong. But they were like, no, 500 days is up. And she just completely... See, they didn't mention how she was getting light. I mean, what power source did she have? It must have been a really good power source. Were they dropping her off batteries or throwing batteries down the hole into the cave or something for her? I, I, I don't know. Okay, so... All right, so she was... So, so she, she was isolated, but she still had access to... To batteries and and I'm assuming totally batteries or, or some <laughs> other power source because she was making videos. She was making videos that she was sending up. She wasn't getting any responses, but she was oh, making videos. Oh, see, I didn't know that part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if they gave her a generator or some kind of, but even that, you know, 500 days. Yeah. That's a lot of a lot of power uh, gas or couldn't have been gas because she would have probably died. Right, right. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. Again, where does the poop go? <laughs> what I'm wondering is is why didn't like some lava men or something come up and be like, what you know, what are you doing here? This could have started a war. Oh, oh mole, mole man is definitely man. down there. Is that mole man from the Fantastic Four? Yeah, the mole man and <laughs> mole know, man definitely visited her. He the mole like, must not tell people about. Yeah, exactly. Girl. She was kicking it in in mole she city. She had friends, and oh, she, was the dude she probably. From, uh, the uh, Incredibles, it. yeah, exactly. Mole, <laughs> yeah, the, the Mole Man ripoff, yeah, yeah. And she probably created a what was what was the thing from the Tom Hanks movie? Oh, she she had her own Wilson. Wilson. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had a Wilson down there that she was just chatting it up with. Yeah, what was that movie where the the women went underground and the creatures were attacking them, and they were spelunking or something? And and it's like. Who does oh, yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Oh. This is how I know she was crazy. When she, I guess when she reemerged, her first love, her first words were basically, I love you so much. I would have been like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, I love you so much. <laughs> Which tells me, yeah, she went a little crazy down there. Then she <laughs> shoved a handful of poop into his face. <laughs> Exactly. I made this for you. That's what she did with the poop. She created a person. She sculpted a person out of poop. Was she using it in the paint, maybe? Maybe she was using it for her artwork. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, Much we, like need, the we need to move on. I don't, I don't like these images. I'm, 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 you know, I'm. There's a homeless dude down the street who he creates masterpieces on people's walls. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, the, the thing, too, that was interesting is that they do this study. I mean, that she was willing to go through with this study. I mean, you must really believe in this or or 
she wanted to know if she could do it maybe because she was an athlete. She's a, she was a rock climber or a cave, uh, uh, spelunker any, yeah. anyway. Right. Maybe she just wanted to see if she could do it and challenge herself. But I mean, if they came to me and they're like, yeah, man, we need you to go in this cave. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to be happening. You know, I've always been fascinated by people like extreme people who do extreme things like, you know, people who climb fucking mountains and or, you know, things like that. I'm just like, I I'm like, I don't need to challenge myself like that. Not anymore. That's for so, people who they, they've got regular life on lock. They, they yeah, need yeah. something else. You know, so somebody like me, I'm like, no, I got to I got to handle these mundane problems here first <laughs> right, before right. I can be out there. Acting yeah, a fool. Yeah. yeah, that's how I feel about. Yeah, I was just like, oh, so your regular life is so cool that that you find it boring, and you were like, listen, I need to, I need to feel something. So let me, let me do this crazy thing. You know, I, w- I was, um, there was a point where I was like, you know, I, w- I would try maybe, you know, jumping out of a plane or, um, or what you call bungee jumping or whatever. But I, <laughs> there was, I saw this news article. Maybe it was a month or two ago. This this guy who's on vacation in Thailand, I think so. I think it was. Um, and he went bungee jumping and the cord snapped. Damn, damn. And, he, and he survived, but he got <laughs> jacked up. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, the thing about these type of events, it's not, it's not even the courage to do them. It's like you are literally putting your life in another person's hand. So if they yes. got faulty equipment or, or the wrong, you know, not enough skill or knowledge or whatever, if they just having a bad day. I mean, you could die, or yeah. you could get really jacked up and live. I don't know which one is worse. I'm like, like no, any, I'm, good. I'm good. Any activity where you have to sign a waiver, I'm like, you know what? I'm not interested in that. Because I imagine when you go, I imagine if you jump out of a plane or go, bunch, you have to sign a, a waiver that you know, like it's not our fault. Right. So, like anything where you have to sign a waiver, I'm like, you know what? No, I don't think I'm interested in that then. But you yeah. know. <laughs> I'm a city boy who, you know, who, you know, I'm not a coward, but you know, I rather live. No, there's I, I there's like, no need for it. I mean, a lot of times it's like, oh, we're gonna go, you know, dive under this thing, and we could probably die, and get killed, and it's like, yeah, that's you're, that's not, not very exciting to me. I mean, not something I'm interested in. You guys go ahead on and enjoy that. You're like, man, we were going so fast. If we would have crashed, we would definitely would have all got killed. And it's like, oh wow, really? Yeah. Good luck with all that. Exactly. I'll be over here so. kicking it, reading reading a comic book. I'm sure they they would be bored to tears by, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know, shout out to Beatrice that she did it. I'm just like, you know what? She has made she built different, and I res- I, I respect it. But I'm just like, I'm like, I respect it, but I don't get it. Well, that was like, remember when COVID was happening and people were going nuts and they were like, I can't deal with this isolation. You know, please yeah, yeah. no, we have to end it. And I was just kicking it. I was just <laughs> yeah. chilling. I'm like, what, what y'all like upset, upset yeah, about? Yeah, what, what is wrong with you all? <laughs> just chill. You know you know? I was pretty cool, but I, you know, there came a point where I was just like, oh man, you know, I mean, I would talk to my friends on the phone, but I just got tired of looking at my apartment. I was like, I need, mean, you know, and so I was like, I just got to take a walk. So I, I turned into one of those weirdos that was just walking around his neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, I got to get out of here. Like, I'm tired of, I mean, I, my apartment is literally four walls. And I was like, I got to get out of this box. <laughs> yeah, so, man. So we're not going to be calling you for the next study. Um, <laughs> we need you to go underground for you know 500 days. She did 500. We need the next person to do a thousand, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Please, don't we got call. we got to top that. Yeah. Oh, you know, but I read about this dude who's going to do some time in some kind of facility that's completely underwater. I got to try to find that article. I don't know how long he's be down there, but that's crazy. I don't, I don't know if I can do that. I don't, I don't like the whole underwater business. No, hell no. Yeah, yeah. You know, our, our people in water yeah, is a love hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pass on that. We've had some bad things that have happened, you know. <laughs> not not, not to bad promote. experiences. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm good on that. But, you know, I just thought it was kind of interesting and also, I'm going to say, just crazy. Like, wow. Like, good on you, but 
Jeez. I mean, I don't know. You guys have already said it multiple times. 500 days. That seems like forever to me. Well, she was a badass, man. She pulled it off and, and mm-hmm. is not crazy. And I know I definitely would have been. But, but see, the thing is, the cave part is what gets me. I just right, couldn't the do cave. cave part. Yeah, yeah. that's where I would have been like, no, nah, dude, no, put, put me in a, in a room or something, but not this freaking cave. Yeah, with, I mean, the bats I mean but, I, but I, I, I guess. So, like, when you, I mean, I guess, you know, ultimately, there comes a point where it doesn't matter if it's night or day. You're just living your life. But I was like, if you don't even know whether it's night or day or, or how long you're there, just for me, I think that would, that would, that would, my brain would fucking short circuit at some point. Well, you know, before we wrap this up, I just want to put something out there on this one. I want to put something out there to everybody listening and everything. So she, she's down there in this cave. It was, it was a long protracted time. This is the way that superhero origin stories begin. <laughs> And she was done. We don't know what happened. I mean, she made these videos, but we don't know everything. She was probably contacted by the lava men or by (laughs) moment people. And he said, I want you to be my representative on the surface, similar to like Wonder Woman, where they, hey, we send you to man's world. He's like, I need you to go back here, take these superpowers and go back up to the surface. And now we're going to start reading. She's in Spain, right? And we're going to start hearing about a vigilante in Spain. And it's going to be like stalagmite lady or something. Were there bats out <laughs> there? I'm sure there were. It must have been some bats or some oh, shit. She's definitely about to become a superhero. Yeah, she got <laughs> powers now. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she, something has to go wrong. You have to suffer or something to get the powers. Yeah, yeah she's been down there training. Whether she has powers or not, she's been training. She, she oh, yeah, she's about to whoop ass now. Yeah. And the, crim- the criminals of Spain... <laughs> they, they, it's over. It's a lock now. It's over. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree with you. I think that's a logical. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, the cave, uh, yeah, the cave woman. That's, a, I guess, that's a better name than stalagmite lady. Well, on that you know note, uh, yeah, <laughs> about that. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening to this weekend no show, but we appreciate it. Please like and share and subscribe if you liked it. Please comment. Let us know what you thought. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll up out of here. LCL Smooth and my boy Ebony Blade. Say goodbye. The Ebony Blade. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) 